Hello, everyone. Breaking news here on CBS News Colorado as we are home uh, <laughs> of the Stanley Cup champions. Look at that crowd as we get a look from Copter 4. We've got great coverage all over downtown Denver, also in Tampa. Fans celebrating across the state as we wait for the avalanche to bring the Stanley Cup home. And I think. Did you hear that uh, we're looking forward to a Thursday parade? I think it's I been believe perfect. that is correct. And of course, that'll be very exciting for everyone here in the city. First time in two decades, Lord Stanley's Cup is heading to Denver. And we promise to take very, very good care of it. In case you weren't watching, it was a very exciting game. The Avs securing the win two to one there in Tampa. Boy, it was a nail biter at times, Jim. <laughs> the two time defending champs, you yes. knew they wouldn't go down with a fight. They Absolutely. got the heart of the champ. And uh, so do our Colorado Avalanche. Copter 4 giving us a look at the celebrations. We had so many great watch parties. You know, the big one at Ball Arena and then uh, the other over at the Tivoli. And one thing also we noticed is a couple of weeks ago, the city granted bars and restaurants down in the, yes. the party zone, if you will. Absolutely. The chance to expand their outdoor seating. So there are just people all over on what <laughs> turned out to be a very nice, dry, cool evening just out celebrating. Absolutely. We got Karen Lee out with with those crowds yeah. celebrating that win and Karen I know it's loud for you but my goodness how sweet it is this victory I know I know it's hard to hear you but I just walked on I think that's going to kind of be how it is out here all night long tonight we were inside Brooklyn's we were inside Brooklyn's whenever um, the final score and everything ended up and it was just erupted fantastic night right we were on the edge of our seat all night long and then it happened we are Stanley Cup champions you can hear the fireworks now going off downtown. It is going to be so much fun for the next, I don't know what, week, as long as we get to celebrate with all of this. And of course, right, we want to go abs, right? So uh, we have crews all over the city here. And Kelly, just make sure that I can hear you whenever you talk to me. But, oh, so we're going to head it over to Michael in Tampa. And uh, Michael, my goodness gracious, we're just, we're alive and excited here in the hometown. And we are so proud of our Stanley Cup champions. I think that the most important thing or one of the things that I want to know is what happened in the first intermission because this was a completely different Colorado Avalanche team when they came out for the second period tonight. Remember, they trailed one to nothing at the end of one. They go into the first intermission and it doesn't take long for them to get on the scoreboard in the second period. Nathan McKinnon scored less than two minutes into that period and then Arturi Lekkinen added a goal later in that frame. That's how the Avs end up with a 2-1 victory tonight. And when I look back at this game, the shots on goal were really an interesting statistic tonight. The Avs were actually outshot in that first period 10 to 7, but I think you got to give a lot of credit to the Avalanche defense. The Tampa Bay Lightning got just 13 shots on goal after the first intermission. I mean, that's a crazy statistic. It ended up being 30 shots on goal to 23 shots on goal in favor of the Avalanche. I want to bring in uh, Romy Bean. Romy, you and I were watching this game, and I turned to you at the end of the first period, and I said, I don't really have a good feeling about this, but that quickly changed. That, it certainly did, Michael, and you know what this was? This was when you say your best player's got to step up. Nathan McKinnon had his best game of the playoffs when it mattered most. This was a defensive clinic, like you mentioned. Kale McCarr maybe didn't have his best game, had the <laughs> Clinching play at the defensive play at the blue line. Your biggest players stepped up when you needed them most. And man, in the third period, you felt like they smelled blood and they kept pushing. This has been the narrative of the Avs. Can they finish? They did. And this was just a few years after heartbreak after heartbreak of the second round. They said they had this resiliency, and boy, did they show it today. And Nathan McKinnon, this he wanted it the most, and he let it the way we've been expecting it. Well, you think back to last year, right? And that second round loss to the Vegas Golden Knights. They lose four straight. McKinnon. Goes into his post-game press conference, he says, look, I'm going in my ninth year, and I haven't won anything, for lack of a better term. That's not what he said, but you get what I'm, what I'm going for there. I can only imagine what's going through their minds tonight. After three straight second-round defeats, this was a team built to win the Stanley Cup. They do that tonight. And I think you got to give a lot of credit not only to the players, but to Joe Sackick and the general manager and the moves that he made to get this team in position to be in a spot like they were tonight. But case in point, who had the game-winning goal? Yeah, Archery Lekkinen, yeah. one of the many. Josh Manson had a fantastic game. Andrew Cogliano has been fantastic. Everyone he's brought in, and even in the offseason, you look at Darren Helm. Prior to that, a couple of years, Valerie Chushkin, uh, Nazem Kadri. Joe Sackick has built this team to win a championship. So, so much credit, not even just at the trade deadline, 
but going back a few years. And hey, that man knows what it takes to win a championship. <laughs> And these guys came through. He held. He hoisted the cup the last time the Avs won the Stanley Cup back in 2001. And I have a feeling he's going to get to uh, party with Lord Stanley one more time. Karen, we got a lot more coverage coming up for you from Tampa tonight. We are waiting to get back on the ice. And when we do that, we will hear from the players and from Jared Bednar bring you their reaction to tonight's game. The bottom line, the Colorado Avalanche Stanley Cup champs. Yeah, I know. Michael, Romy, you guys are so poised and so calm. And we're like losing our minds out here. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> I'm so impressed by it's you guys. A, that's it. It's, it's a little bit of a different about? feel in Tampa right now than it is in Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. It's pretty quiet there. That's right. Well, here it's a totally different story. So we're going to have some fun with this all night long and, of course, bring you through it um, through our 10 o'clock newscast as well. So right now we want to toss it over to, I believe, Michael Abeda. Michael Abeda is over at McGregor Square in the thick of things. And that is where I know hundreds of maybe even a thousand people or more have packed into that area. So, Michael, let's toss it over to you. Yeah, you know what, Karen? I, 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 I don't know. Who won the game? singing all the small things early. It's just a big party here at McGregor, at McGregor Square. And as everybody's celebrating the Owls victory, chanting, we want the cup, taking lots of selfies and videos and just really enjoying this victory and uh, having a lot of fun. And let's hope it stays this way, having fun. Things don't get destructive out here. As you can see, fans are just so excited. The first Stanley Cup since 2001. I remember when that one was when they won that one and the celebration was big then and it's big now. These people are so excited that the Avalanche won the cup. Uh, right now I'll toss it back to you, Karen. We're just having too much fun out here. <laughs> It's so hard to hear, isn't it? But it's fantastic. I mean, we have reason to celebrate, certainly for our team, because they're just fantastic. I know that right behind me, Ball Arena, and inside there is packed. We watch so many people wait in line for those doors to open to get inside Ball Arena. So we want to toss it inside to Connor McHugh, who is inside there with all those fabulous fans. Connor. Yeah, Karen, it is unbelievable in here. It rivals any kind of sporting event I've really been to. And you talked about those long lines to get in. Check out this line right now, seconds after the game ended. These are people waiting to get their championship merchandise, their championship shirts. You can look in here and you can see they're starting to bring those out. This is something that Avalanche fans have been waiting for for a very, very long time. You can see the shirts right there. They've been stacking pucks there. Uh, there's also hats, all kinds of merchandise. All of these kinds of things that people can bring home to remember this incredible moment for Avs fandom. Uh, we want to talk to the first person in line right now. This is Maggie. Maggie, tell me uh, uh, where you came from for this game. I actually just came from right up the street. I live right up the street, so. Tell me yeah. what you're feeling right now with uh, with the Avs win. Uh, I'm very excited. We deserve this, and go Avs. What was this experience like for you to be here at the watch party? I know it's not the game, but what was this like to be with 18,000 other Avs fans? Um, it was really great. This is my third one I've been to, and just the atmosphere is just out of this world. And you are right now first in line. Uh, tell me what you're, what you're kind of eyeing right now. What, what are you going to be going for once you get in there? I am going to be going for two shirts. Yes, awesome. And how does this compare to any other sporting event uh, experience you've had? Um, this is one of the best. I would just say the atmosphere and the people are just out of this world. Um, I definitely recommend it again next year. Awesome. Well, we hope there is a next year for the same kind of experience. Again, let's before we toss it back, show you this line that just continues to grow. You can see right here all these people right now waiting to get into shirts. This is just one of the smaller merchandise stores on the bottom level. I'm sure the line is even longer. And then when we look down the concourse, you can kind of see through there uh, when you look when you look down through the concourse, you can see all kinds of people will be flooding out here as well soon. But right now, just pandemonium here inside Ball Arena. Yeah, Connor, I'm hoping that you can get us all T-shirts. We'll just Venmo you some money. We'll send you some money if you'll grab us some of those championships, Stanley Cup winning championship T-shirts. We would love it. All right, Connor, we're going to get back to you in just a couple of minutes. Right now, we want to head down south to Park Meadows Mall, where Marissa R. Moss is inside Dick's Sporting Goods Store, I believe down that area and Marissa I'm guessing there's some uh, hot items there to buy too. 
There are, Karen, and I feel really special just to be here right now because we're getting an exclusive first look at this brand new Stanley Cup Champions merchandise. And the store here actually wasn't open, but it's preparing to open any minute now and will stay open until midnight. But I want to tell you guys, some of these items are so cool. So when you first walk into the store, not only can you get one of these for free, but this entire stretch is filled with that Champs Avs Champs merchandise. So these are actually some of the shirts and there's several that you can actually choose from. If you take a look at this one here, it says Stanley Cups Champions. This isn't a women's shirt, but nice color here. And we have the employees back here doing some great work, putting this all together for these customers that are getting ready to come here. So thank you guys so much. Um, and take a look at this. I mean, they're just such, there's so much variety in some of these shirts you can choose from. And even the employees, you know, when the Avs actually took that win, they were even really excited to just be here and witness this and to, of course, just prepare. But I wanted you guys to follow me back this way. We do have some nice hoodies here. I mean, this is something that I could totally take home. What about you, Eric? How do you feel about it? You like it? He likes it. My photographer likes this one. But I want to show you guys because not only are there t-shirts, but again, there are different types of merchandise. We have tumblers, we have coffee cups, pucks, and we have our employees, again, like I mentioned, kind of just preparing for all of those fans that are expected to come tonight. They do expect to have a lot of people coming here tonight to pick up some of this merchandise. And it's a little tight here, but Eric, if you want to follow me this way, you can see some of the other merchandise that they're also going to be selling. These are some Stanley Cup champion flags. We have some car flags, of course, a coffee cup, tumblers, and even some hockey pucks over here on the side. So again, if you are planning on coming out, we are here at the Dick's Sporting Goods in Park Meadows Mall. These employees are expected to stay out here at least until midnight. Make sure you check back in with us, and I'll be sure to give you an update and see how many fans start to open and come through these doors soon. <laughs> Oh, so much fun and so many things to buy, Marissa. Thank you so much for all of that. Let's toss it back over to Michael Obeda, who is live in the thick of things here downtown over at McGregor Square. Michael? Hey, we're getting kicked out of McGregor Square as we speak, live on TV. She's kicking us out of McGregor Square. DPD had to step in because they started throwing tables in McGregor Square, but they evacuated everybody. As you can see, this one. So we're getting kicked out of McGregor Square uh, right now as uh, they're into giving the cup to the Avs on live TV. People are celebrating. Everybody is happy, but we did see some people throwing chairs, piling them up, uh, and DPD had to step in and get everybody out of there. So right now, every kind of just a little bit of a chaotic situation uh, as everybody getting moved out of McGregor Square, but at the same time trying to celebrate and DPD stepping in to make sure everybody is staying safe. Uh, we're going to keep getting out of here because we got kicked out of McGregor Square. So we'll uh, toss it back to you for right now, Karen. Yeah, Michael, be so careful out there. We know that you guys are. And of course, we want to, everybody wants to celebrate downtown and we get it, but we want everybody to be safe. And please are not taking any chances down here tonight. Jim and Kelly, I know that we had SWAT out here. We had a lot of officers all around the perimeter here at Ball Arena because they just want to make sure that everyone is safe so that we can continue to enjoy this huge win, this huge celebration mm -hmm. throughout the night. Back to you guys. Yeah, Karen, you're so right. And uh, in the past, we've uh, had some uh, issues after the Avs won yeah. their prior two Stanley Cups. So uh, we know that it's possible. Hopefully things don't get too much more rowdy than what we just saw at McGregor Square. So we can't give you the look that Michael Abeda was providing, but Copter 4 is up top. And I think that we've got to look down at McGregor Square right now. And it went from packed to pretty nearly empty. And you can see why. As uh, my mom would say, knuckleheads, Kelly, <laughs> were throwing things about. And, uh, yeah, not behaving. We, yeah, no, we see some damage down there. Some of the uh, furniture that was laid out for the occasion has been, uh, has been smashed. So, uh, smart. And we see uh, plenty of officers down there. That should prevent more trouble. Uh, but uh, some people just uh, don't know how to celebrate safely. And uh, thankfully, most people do. Right. And, you know, this is another reason why I think that the Tivoli Quad decided not to have their watch party this evening when things got out of hand, a little bit out of hand after Game 5. So certainly everybody is excited and wants to celebrate the return of the Stanley Cup back here to Colorado. Um, but there's a lot of people downtown and certainly a lot of potential issues. So if you're watching this, steer clear of downtown. And if you're listening to this while you're downtown, just behave. All right. We'll and <laughs> let's talk again about that two to one game. 
wasn't that terrific? Gosh. It was exciting. You know, that first period was tough to see yeah. when, the, when the Lightning took the first goal. I think the Avs came back in the second period, fired up and ready, and it certainly was exciting to see them hold on to that 2-1 two to, two to one victory and 2-1 to one lead. Um, so, very exciting night for Denver, all of Colorado. We're going to continue our coverage of the Stanley Cup champions here on CBS News Colorado when we come back.